you're tall, you're big, you fit the profile. That's not how I would describe myself. But those were the words of a young man by the name of Lamar. I met a gallery place metro station fully dressed in police regalia. I stopped. I looked at him and I smiled. He sort of stared at me and as if he was anticipating me to say something. Then he said, yeah, your parents probably had money and you went to good school. And that's why probably you became a police officer. Well, Lamar was right. I'm tall. I'm big. And I represent the symbol of power. But what Lamar didn't know that day was the story behind how I became a police officer. My story began in Liberia. When I was five years old, my parents was separated. My mother moved into a small house, was lived in a swamp, and it would flood every time it rained. I remember one night as I lied down, my mom made each and every one of us put our head on her chest. That night I couldn't sleep. I heard her cry the entire night. At age five, that was my first experience with pain and fear. I lived through that situation for several years. By the time I was age 10, I would have nightmares about going to school, and I wouldn't sleep the entire night. Not because I had the education, but because the kids would laugh at me at school and make jokes about me, all because I wore the same clothes every, almost every day. It was a painful experience going to school every day. But by the time I got to age 13, I hated people. And it became worse, because by that time, there was a civil war in Liberia. And I would watch rebel forces take my mother away from our home on multiple occasions, all simply because she had a last name that was similar to that of the president at the time, Doe. And all we did was sit around and cry. Well, we fled to the Ivory Coast eventually. By this time, I was 15. Well, my mother couldn't take it anymore, and she kept getting sick. So I was required now to contribute to the family, to sustaining my family. So I got a job working in a swamp, planting rice. After working one day, I felt itching sensation in my leg. I lifted up my pants, and there were leeches stuck to my leg. A gentleman walked in and be, grabbed the plier and began to pull him out. And as he did, my skin came off. I was bleeding. I was afraid. But I wasn't afraid of the fact that I was bleeding. What I was afraid of, what I knew that I had to wake up the next day and go right back into the same swamp because there was no alternative. I lived through that situation for several years. And I eventually resettled in America with my father as a refugee. Through the process of transition, I became homeless. This time, my reason of explaining my story was to help Lamar understand that our experiences are different but our experiences are all part of the puzzle that create a bigger picture for our greater calling. But Lamar was crying. There was tears in his eyes. Well, my life changed, and it changed for better, and I wanted Lamar to know that. So I explained to him how my life changed. One morning, while collecting a bowl of soup from a young lady, she said to me, you should try smiling a little more. Smiling? 
That was strange. That was the first time I've heard something that great in a long time. By that time I hated people anyway, I didn't want to be around people. But it was strange. So I gave it a try. As simple as it sounds, it changed my life. Here's how it did. I began to smile as I walked past people on the streets of Washington, D.C., and I realized that they would smile right back at me. Then I realized I was greeting people and smiling at the same time, and they would greet me back and smile back at me. See, my supervisor is probably sitting in the audience right now because he promised me he was going to be here. <laughs> but he told me one day, Joe, I noticed that when you encounter adversity, you don't complain like everybody else. You smile and you walk away. Well, that's true. That's because smiling became my coping mechanism. What smiling did for me was saying, I'm not running anymore. I am not howling from you fear anymore. I am not going to be intimidated by fear anymore. What smiling did for me will allow me to stand friendly, also pull a smile on my face, and embrace fear. So fear became for me a part of everything I did. But even more importantly, here is what fear did for me in the process of smiling. I came to discover one of my greatest calling, and that was the appreciation for humanity as a whole. Today, that is the primary reason why I became a police officer. Fear taught me to smile, and smile taught me gratitude. I have not seen Lamar since that day. And in fact, if I saw him today, I probably would not even recognize him. But the truth is, I'm here, and I'm here sharing my story with you for a reason, and here is why. Fear is real. Fear is among us. You will encounter fear even when you least expect it. It will pursue you every way fear can pursue you. It will even drive you farther away from your goals. But no, 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 no. My hope this afternoon is that you too, through my story, will come to a point of finding your own coping mechanism. iPhone smile, and it worked for me. You can find a coping mechanism that will work for you as well. And you too will not have to run away from fear. You won't have to, 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 to hide yourself from fear, that you too can also embrace fear. And most importantly, it's not just only about a coping mechanism, but it is my hope that like me, fear itself will drive you to a greater calling. Thank you.